NCIS is, I think, in a very good place. We're well established by now. We have been successful when judged by nearly any measure of success. And we really don't have anything to prove in traditional terms of traditional educational credentials. No one knows what the world or, the, or schools will look like 30 years from now or even 14 years from now when the current reception class will graduate as the CIS class of 2027. Guided by our mission and anchored in our accomplishments, CIS has the confidence and the courage to ask big questions and to take on big challenges in education. I think the major challenges our generation faces are the changing political and economic landscape with the rise of Asia and sustainable economic growth. I think the biggest challenges that you know, students will face when they graduate high school and then graduate college is the abundance of competition that's going to come into Hong Kong fighting for every job that they want. For the next few decades, the main challenge for China will be the education. If you think back 30 years ago, what challenges the students faced uh, at that time and compare with the challenges the students are facing now, the difference is huge. The problem with the current paradigm is that it's essentially over a hundred years old. It's a factory model. The teacher teaches, the students absorb that teaching and turn into good, useful citizens. We need to change that. It needs to become what our mission says, uh, the student at the centre. We need to focus much more on individual students and how they learn rather than what we teach over the next 30 years to develop the kinds of changes we want to see. We're getting to that point by cultivating students that have a degree of empathy, that are mindful, that have an understanding of the world, and have a strong sense of community. In terms of hardware, I think it's true to say that the new building and the development at CIS Bremer Hill will make a big difference in students' lives. It will give us more classroom space, it will enhance teaching and learning so we can meet those goals. CIS is perceived as you know, a very innovative school you know, with their Hangzhou program going on and you know, the primary school has this amazing curriculum. Myself and other international audiences were like, wow, CIS, like, you're really like, paving the way and going forward. CIS has an innovative way of offering a dual language program. The students watch the teachers work together harmoniously first hand and this is important for them to know and to, to watch so that in the future they know how to work together with other people. I think the best thing to do with the same education is that you can see the other teacher in your own school and take your class. You can learn a lot from him. For example, my partner Mike, every day he sees my first sentence is, Oh, I got an idea. We can do this, we can do that. With respect to dual language, science is now showing what we as serious language learners and language teachers have always known intuitively. To be deeply rooted in two languages and two cultures creates individuals who are agile and adaptable and have a kind of cultural intelligence that is otherwise much more difficult to acquire. The dual language focus of the school has definitely been an advantage for me because it allows me to connect with Chinese culture and with English and Chinese together almost a third of the world's population. You have to know everybody's culture. You have to learn everybody's culture, but most important, you have to know your own culture. Things are changeable, the brain is malleable. So we'll look at maybe resilience, optimism, grit, and how can we develop those characteristics in ourselves and our children so that they'll be successful now and later on in life. CIS Hangzhou is a potential game changer because we're taking our students out of their familiar context in Hong Kong and out of really any virtual world and putting them in a very different, very challenging environment for a full school year. There's a very strategic move for the CIS. I think the next 10, 20 years 
uh, China is going to be so important to the world. And for the young people coming to uh, from CIS, you know, they come to Hangzhou to know China. It's just like I believe culture is like a seed you bury into the kids. In 20 years, the seeds will grow to a big tree. We are no longer talking about experiential learning, about integrated curricula, about meaningful student-led school governance. We are exercising these things. So this is about practice rather than theory. This is what takes the IS to a new level. I mainly came here so I could improve my Chinese, my Mandarin, and also to get a better understanding of the Chinese culture. The rise of China means that it's important for us to embrace the fact that we're learning Chinese, taking advantage of the fact that we're now in a Chinese society to learn as much as possible about the Chinese culture and its language. I'd rather to see CIS students to go ahead, to move outside the campus, to uh, get in touch with more real experience in China. Today, most people know about China through the books, but I think these kids from CIS, they will see the China from their own eyes. The problems that the leaders of tomorrow face are the problems that we all face. They're problems of health. The fact that we cannot continue to consume to the extent that we do consume. It's a simple geometric truth. We know that we're very water stressed. We know there are problems with the air quality. We are living, frankly, beyond our means. So the fundamental challenge is how do you get back into balance? And how do you bring forward the next generation of people who understand they need to question what we do so that we can put ourselves on the right path. Well, my group's question was, what is the government doing about our air pollution and people's health? My group's question was, if pollution continues at this rate, what will Hong Kong be in the future? Waterworks is a global issues group at school, and basically what we do is we promote water conservation as well as raise funds to build wells in Cambodia. So we organized a trip to Cambodia to work with um, a local NGO, Rainwater Cambodia, on one of their projects. We help them construct rainwater harvesting systems to provide safe drinking water for the families in Cambodia. And they're basically large concrete jars uh, with filtration systems that collects rainwater that can be used by the family. I definitely think that looking forward we should start paying more attention towards our options with renewable energy. This is the location of the proposed Hong Kong offshore wind farm. This is a 100 megawatt project that I started developing back in 2005 in order to try and create some clean energy in Hong Kong. And hopefully in a few years time we'll be operational. Eunice uh, just mentioned in the email that all these experiences that she had from Project Week to uh, our own Year 13 geography field work, to uh, bringing out to 21st century learning, and how it's just giving her that foundation and confidence. CIS has definitely prepared me for my future, ranging from academics to leadership skills. All the projects I'm working on uh, can be attributed to CIS. The proof of a school's worth are the people who leave its walls and go on to lead their lives. Three years ago, I was doing climate change campaigns, basically mobilizing students across China to do actions that would help the climate. I'm currently interning at the Duke Smoking Research Lab and we're looking to use smartphone technology um, to prevent people from smoking. Well, I came to law mainly out of uh, intellectual curiosity. It was probably during the time when I was studying history under David Walker. As a result of uh, really efforts by the school, uh, I've been uh, able uh, to do a number of things with CIS students. One of those things is to have students who are interested in legal practice come uh, and uh, spend time as students in my chambers. We meet around maybe once a month and he's helping me with my school, giving me advice and especially university applications and also giving me advice with law and what it's like studying law. Our objective is to minimize waste and to help more needy people in Hong Kong. You don't see the homeless people, you don't see the street sleepers, you don't see the single families that are struggling to have their food needs met. And that shouldn't be the case in Hong Kong. And if we can use food to provide happiness to these people, um, then, you know, we're, we're doing our, a small part. Sun Kids is a very nurturing and creative 
learning community, and we offer English, Mandarin, art, and dance classes for young children. Everybody's talking Chinglish. He said it's all about air. The new comedy that goes from the boardroom to the bedroom. On the bed. He's so beautiful. Sounds hot, right? If I say it, he doesn't understand. I was really inspired into computer programming by Mr. Bernardo when I was in um, back in CIS. My company name is uh, Playreap Studios, and we make iPhone games, mainly general educational games. They're aimed from primary school to secondary school students, range from you know teaching them how to learn Chinese idioms and also national flags. My best-selling game is it's a poker game, actually. I would say that I'm involved with you know, some part of CIS on a daily basis because I met my wife in CIS and <laughs> I see her daily. Um, you know, CIS sort of my best friends are all from CIS. I get involved whenever I can through you know alumni activities, alumni fund, and uh, one of the biggest things for us every year is the Dragon Boat team. We bring some silverware home, and uh, that always helps. It's a great place, great people, and a good excuse to get together. We have the potential to do something really spectacular in the next 30 years. We have everything in place. We have the buildings, we have the, the, the backing of the board, we have great students, great parents, and a, and a wonderful group of teachers. And we can, if we want, become world leaders in education. When a person reaches 30, we say in Chinese, 三十而立, which means when you're 30, you are mature enough to be independent and you're confident enough to face all challenges. I think the Chinese students should remember that we learn the things in Chinese in Chinese in the whole day. We learn the news in Chinese, with your family and friends in Chinese. Practice makes perfect. Success needs to be measured by how well you do something, how much you like to do what you're doing. So my advice would be to find out what your interests really are and then to pursue them. Treasure every moment you have at CIS and realize how lucky you are to be part of the CIS community. Happy 30th anniversary for Chinese International School. Keep up the good work. 加油, 努力, 坚持. I'm sorry. Yeah, actually, I'm going to start that question again. Sorry, I don't think I'm doing it well. Billy Holiday, one take. Sorry, I'm hooked up. <laughs> Sit straight up? Okay. Give me a teleprompter or something like that. Well, my dream job is a food critic because I really like eating. I've completely lost my train of thought. Okay. And the moment you think long term, you're not, <laughs> you're not going to be thinking short term. <laughs> Somebody just went down. Oh, with this. Awesome. I hope some of this stuff is, is usable. huh? Do you think some of it's usable? Everybody have to at least speak two languages. That's, that's why I think Mandarin and English. Or Spanish. <laughs>